If you got your Bibles, and I hope you do, your iPads or your telephones, whatever you use, would you go to me, go with me today to the book of St. Luke chapter 19? The book of St. Luke chapter 19. As you turn into Luke chapter 19, you know, me and Kathy, come June the 6th of this year, uh, we celebrated 52 years of marriage. That's a long time. Never thought of it as 52 years. I married Kathy when she was 17 and I was 20. We were just two kids, you know, back, it's called them June brides. Most girls back in my, in my age, uh, they graduated from high school March the 30, uh, excuse me, May the 31st, and they got married the next week. They called them June brides. It's just the way it was, and that's what happened. And God's been so good, but we were so totally opposite and still are till today. <laughs> opposite attract for some crazy reason. I want to talk about that this morning. Opposite attract, just like outcast attract. Outcasts attracted to each other, as well as opposites are attracted to each other. And I'm going to show you this in the scripture today, because we're not really weird people. What we are is born again people. Now, people that don't know the Lord, they really think we're strange. You see, and we're not, because they say, well, you're religious. No, religious people don't act like us. We're born again people. That's a vast difference there. Luke chapter 19, I don't know why the world wants to judge all the time, especially the church world, but I'm going to show you something here. First thing first, Jesus was an outcast. They didn't like him in Jerusalem. Now, the, the rule there is love Jesus, but they didn't like him in Jerusalem. But the Jerusalem church was so powerful that they actually changed the rule, people, how they thought about him. He came in and they were waving banners. You know, you, you talk about Palm Sunday. And I mean, just a few days later, the same ones that were saying he was great were saying crucify him. Outcast the tribe. They didn't like Jesus because he pulled too many people. And they were afraid they might lose their power. I want to deal with that this morning, and you'll be best by it. Luke chapter 19, verse 1, I'm reading out of the King James, Old King James Version. It says, And Jesus entered in and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature. So he's a short guy. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree. You see, I'm sick of mine. Are you sick of yours? <laughs> I, mean, you know, I mean, you know, the man want to see Jesus. He's too short, so he climbed up in the sycamore tree. I'm sick of mine. Are you sick of yours? I mean, just think about it. Watch that. To see him, for he was past that way. Verse 5. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down for today. I must abide at thy house. Whoa. Nobody likes Zacchaeus. He works for the Roman government, even though he's a Jew. He's a publican or Republican, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Publican or Democrat, what do you call it what you want? They didn't like him. Look what he says in verse 6. He made haste, Zacchaeus, and came down and received them joyfully. And when they saw it, uh-oh, they all murmured, murmur, murmur saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. The, judge, the, the Jewish church had already judged him as a sinner because he was a publican, because he worked for the, Jewish, uh, for the Roman government. So automatically they hated him. They judged him. He said he's a sinner, and Jesus is going down there to go eat with him. See, outcast the track, just like opposite the track. Watch this. Verse 6, excuse me, verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if, underline the word if, I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore it him fourfold. He didn't do any of that stuff that people said. He said, if I've done anything wrong, I'll restore it fourfold. See, but the church well already then judged him to hell. He's a devil from he's a he's a thief. Now he's not a thief. He didn't do any of that. But they accused him. They, they made him an outcast. Watch this, verse nine. Jesus said to him, "This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham." So Jesus put him in the in the lineage of Abraham. He was the son of Abraham. Church don't like him, but Jesus calls him a son of Abraham. Abraham is our spiritual father with the seed of Abraham. Look what Jesus said. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
He said, hey, Zach, I'm coming to your house. Now, how many times did Jesus stop at Zacchaeus' house doing his earthly ministry and ate dinner with him? But yet the Jewish church hated him. The Jerusalem church hated him because they said he's stealing. And Zacchaeus said, I've never taken anything from anybody. How many times the church will just judge people? For just, for just judge people just to judge them. And yet Jesus said, he's a, he's a son of Abraham. Oh, he's in the fold. So write this down if you're taking notes. He said, I came to seek and save. To seek and save is a quest and a conquest. To save is restoration. To seek means tireless effort. In other words, when Jesus said, I came to this man's house to seek and to save. A quest and a conquest. Now, you know, it's amazing to me how many people that didn't care if I went to hell. Didn't make any difference. You know, I was a rock entertainer. Many of you know that before I was born again. I played big places like the Venetian, you know, and they would, they would have big Christian meetings going on. You know, they rented places. And, of course, I'm playing clubs and shows and everything you could think of. And yet, I mean, if anybody needed Jesus, I did. I mean, I looked like a, a heathen from hell. I was a chief of sinners. And they would walk out, you know, taking breaks, I guess, and they have their little name tags on it with a Christian. A little crosser, not one person ever came up to me and asked me if I'd like to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one that ever witnessed to me ever was Kathy, and she was saved two years before me, and my mother. That's it. Why? Because I was an outcast. He's a sinner. If anybody needed Jesus, I did, but they refused. Do you know that God went to a place that the church wouldn't go? Church wouldn't go down. Who I ain't going down that strip. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. God said, I'll go. I'll go and get somebody saved. I'll change their lives. See, he went on a quest and a conquest. That's why he said, Zach, make haste. I'm going to eat at your house today. Woo! Church matters on it. Jesus didn't tell Zacchaeus to repent of anything. He said, look, but he said, listen, just because you came, if I've done anything wrong, I'll, retort, I'll restore it. See, he didn't do nothing wrong. But the church world thought he did. See, we must believe in the best of people instead of the worst. We must have unconquerable confidence and superb faith, which qualifies us to become a friend. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Let me say that again if you're writing it down. We must believe in the best of people. We must have unconquerable confidence and superb faith, which qualifies us to become a friend. I have a lot of sinner friends. Why? Because Jesus did. Ephesians 5, 1, be you therefore imitators of God as dear children. You may not realize that one time I was preaching at Word of Life here, and one of the biggest mafiosa guys came to see me. Here. I ain't going to tell you who he is. Here. And he put some chips in my offering. He did. A guy I used to work for many, many, many years ago. You know, you know, because at one time, let's face it, Little Costa Nostra ran Las Vegas. And there's evidence of that fact. Lake Mead. <laughs> Got a lot of holes in that desert out there. I'm telling you what, man, it was something way back when. And yet, he came to see me. Most people would never, if they'd have known that, whoo, Lord. Well, he needs the same Jesus that you do. See, I'm a friend of sinners. And I'll tell you what, and I have a lot of La Cosa Nostra friends. You know, and they like me. They say, I die with you. I die with you. Somebody mess with you, they mess with us. You understand? I just let my light shine. Why? They need Jesus. That's just that simple, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why people would freak out over that. But the church will say, oh, I'd have nothing to do with that. Well, why not? Jesus did. Why? To seek and to save that which was lost. He saw the best in people. He says, some people believe in original sin. I believe in original goodness. Write that down. Some people believe in original sin. I personally believe in original goodness. Because in everyone that's ever been on this planet, there's some goodness. you got to have the right person to tap into it. God don't create bad. Lucifer does that. When God created uh, Lu Lucifer, he wasn't bad. He created Satan, talking about Lucifer. He became the bad. God didn't do that. He was the anointed cherub that covered it. Think about that for a minute. So we must believe in the best of people. 
We must have that unconquerable confidence and superb faith, which qualifies us to become a friend. Some people believe in original sin. I believe in original goodness. That's why Jesus was a friend of publicans and sinners. That's why I have sinner friends as well as Christian friends. It doesn't bother me in the least. I just, I just enjoy my life, and they like me. Why? Because I want them to see the light of Christ in my life. See, opposites the track, just as outcasts the track. You see what I'm saying? And when you understand that, because you see, I, I don't know, I guess what, what attracted Catherine to me when I was young, oh, I was good looking. You should have seen me. <laughs> Kathy said, I'm a legend in my own mind. <laughs> oh, I had a body. Oh, Lord Jesus. I had a body. I was tight. Oh, six, six pack. I got a keg now. But I mean, I had that six pack. <laughs> Kathy used to tell me when we was at the beach, Jesse, put your shirt on. I said, why? Too many people looking at your body. I had one. Watch my body. <laughs> oh, it's all fell down now. But I mean, <laughs> in those days, it was tight. We was at the beach, last, not last week. It was the last week. We brought our little granddaughter over to, uh, to Florida for a few days. <laughs> you know what Kathy said? But Jesse, don't take that shirt off. <laughs> I said, okay, I am not. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't laugh, Andy. It's coming on you, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but not yet. You're only 60. I, you got to go a little further. You, know? <laughs> you see, so when you understand, I don't know what she saw in me, but it was something. She would talk to me. Oh, yeah, I had a lean with me. I should have been a black brother. I had that lean. Hey, what's up, baby? How you doing? <laughs> hey, kind of swing that arm a little bit. <laughs> White people are totally different. No, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you understand. And people will say, why you go out with that guy? That guy, man, he's something, man. I don't know. Well, you know, why would Jesus save people you thought you, you would hate? Because he saw some goodness. I believe in original goodness. I, I really do. So I've become a, a, they don't stay sinners very long. I let my light shine. See, when you understand that, Zacchaeus' conversion is the clearest illustration of the love of God in action. The church wouldn't have a thing to do with Zacchaeus. And yet he did nothing wrong. He just happened to work for the Roman government. Oh, and I just made him mad as a hornet. Yet Jesus said, I came for a quest and a conquest. I, I, salvation has come to the house. You are a son of Abraham. Isn't that a blessing of God? And you know, I still have church people that won't accept me. I'm telling you, man, I mean, I mean, because they know my past. Oh, you got to watch this guy. I don't have any past. I'm going to say something going to shock you. I have wronged no man. The Apostle Paul said that in Saul of Tarsus before he was saved would drag kids out in the street and kill them over God. He killed people, Saul. He said, I have wronged no man. Why? Because you see, when you got born again, up in the balcony, look at it. When you got born again, your past was gone. You see, if they, if they emptied out your Lake Mead, they wouldn't find nobodies. When I heard that, I had a friend of mine going, heard about that man. It's on the news. I said, what's that? Man, the Lake Mead's just really drying up. They found a 55-gallon drum with the bodies in it. Yeah. Well, let me go on to the next person here. <laughs> Zacchaeus' conversion is the clearest illustration of the love of God in action. See, we sometimes have to pass through the fire of people's disapproval. You can, if you love lit and love mastered. See, it makes no difference who they are. It's what they can become. See, we sometimes have to pass through the fire of people's disapproval. You can if you love lit and love master. Many of y'all know about that thing that about four years ago. I was the number one story in the world. I was on ABC, CBS, NBC, Good Morning America. They said I had four jets. Anybody remember all that stuff? Boy, they would want to eat my lunch. Oh, they were mad at me, which was a lie. If I have four jets, I need to make a theft report because three of them are missing, Andy. <laughs> I just never seen them. I just like to know where they are. Maybe they're in Lake Mead. Who knows? <laughs> or Lake Powell, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. 
Oh, they want to kill me. The church, ch preachers accused me, and they knew it was a lie. Now, I'm a, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I got a little tempted because the La Costa Nostra <laughs> called me and said, you want us to take care of this? I wanted to go, yeah. <laughs> I'll repent tomorrow. <laughs> do it today. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. I told someone, what would you think of me if I told you to do that kind of stuff? They go, I forget about it. I die with you. They like me. I was raised on the streets of New Orleans with that persuasion. You see what I'm saying? But thank God that the Lord saved me. See, he saw something in me. You know, when I went to my 50th high school reunion, never thought, I remember when I graduated from high school, I saw somebody going to their 50th. I thought, God, look how old they are. And I went to mine, I was voted the most changed. <laughs> True. Not because my hair was white. They say, you still look the same. Not that you're older, but I mean, you still look the same. It's just that, who would have thought you'd be a preacher? <sighs> <laughs> you little gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I, yet they asked me to pray. I had some of them come up there and say, would you pray? Yes, it was just such a blessing. Why? Because I have no past. This outcast, quote, quote, called Jesus was attracted to this outcast called Jesse and changed my life. Isn't that something? So sometimes you got to pass through the fire of disapproval. You know, this and that. People are mad about something, about somewhere, somehow. When you understand that, I, I, I just don't do those things. You see, I, I don't use the policy of isolation. A lot of people use the policy of isolation. There's, I have a lot of friends of mine, they can only preach the word of faith. Not me. I preach in Baptist churches, Episcopal churches, Catholic churches, Jewish synagogues, Methodist churches, Presbyterian churches. But they're Christians, aren't they? Well, I lost a few of you right there. They say they're Christians. I love preaching in Jewish synagogues. The Jews, the, the rabbis like me. I'm so glad, you know. I mean, we were walking out a mall one time, a mall, me and Kathy, and this, and this man, excuse me, sir, excuse me. And I turned around, I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, you Jesse Duplantis? I said, yes, I am. And it was two rabbis. We watch you every Sunday morning. You say such interesting things. I said, well, thank you, rabbi. You know, they can watch Sunday because they're off. You know, their service is on Saturday, see. I said, well, thank you. And, and they liked me. And I was invited to preach in one of the biggest synagogues in Boston, Massachusetts. I was so excited. They said, we want you to come and talk to us. And I looked at, and I, I looked at the uh, rabbi. I said, Rabbi, you know I'm a Christian? He says, yes. I said, well, can I say Jesus? He said, not too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. I lost him. <laughs> Do you know I got criticized by, by the church, the Christian church? See, what'd you preach on? The God of Abraham. The God of Abraham. That's so simple. The rabbi said, Oh, you come back anytime you want. You have an open invitation. Such a blessing. I said, Rabbi, why are we talking? Can I ask you a question? He said, What's that? I said, Do you know Jesus is Jewish? What's the matter? You don't like your own people? And he says, this is what I'm talking about. You say such interesting things. <laughs> I can't say that. I laugh every time I, I say that. Why, why? No, policy of, I don't use the policy of isolation. I remember when I first started out, I, you know, South Louisiana, very prejudiced. Whoo, Lord Jesus. We had black churches and white churches. Anytime a white church sold a building, they sold it to the black people. That's sad, isn't it? I never forget one time I went to a really prejudiced place. It was called a sundown town. You know what that means? No black person better be in there once the sun goes down. That's sad. I'm telling you. How many people know what I'm talking about? You're going to be my age, but I mean, with a lot of young people don't understand that. Why is this? 
So he handed me the pulpit. I walked up to the pulpit. It wasn't a very big church, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, this black couple and their two little children came in, walked up like this, and they went on the back pew. There was a guy sitting on the front pew. He looks back there, gets up, walks to the back like this. I don't know. I don't know what he said. You know, he just said something, you know. And I'm about ready to preach. All of a sudden, they went, oh. And they get him, he, he, he get the kids. And it caught my attention. I said, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, where y'all going? <laughs> and everybody got real quiet, you know. And uh, he said, oh, but Jesse, something come up. We wanted to come see you. And uh, uh, but, uh, something just came up we didn't know. I said, did that guy tell you to leave this church? Now, I'm saying this from the pulpit like y'all. Everybody's like this. And this crazy deacon, because he was deacon possessed, that's his problem. He says, bro, Justin, this is a white church. I said, what'd you say? This is a white church. And I turned around like it, and I look at that pastor, and he goes, I said, well, I hope you got your act together to the pastor. Y'all going to eat lunch? Yeah, I'm going with you. See y'all, baby, I'm out of here. I just walk, I just laugh. I just, you understand what I'm saying? I will not have that in my presence. I will shut it down. I don't care where I'm at. I don't care if I'm in public. If something like that happened, I shut it down. I don't allow it. It's wrong. It's wrong. Call me an outcast. Call me what you want. For God so loved the world. He didn't say God so loved white people, brown people, red people, black people. The world. We're all part of the world. Why are we different? He likes variety. I don't know. I got some friends of mine like real fat women. I ain't talking about, I'm talking fat women. I got some friends of mine that love skinny women. I got some friends of mine that take any woman. Because <laughs> they're ugly as sin. They're just ugly. <laughs> it don't make no difference. So Opposites attract. Outcast attract. I never forget <laughs> when they integrated our schools. Oh God, 1967. Police, German police dogs walking. Why am I getting on this, Lord? Just to keep saying it. Police, German police are walking on our man. I mean, these dogs were vicious because black people were coming to our school. South Down High School, which was the black school, was coming to Terrebonne High School. Everybody is mad but me. They said, how come you ain't mad? Let's see if we're going to win some games, man. <laughs> Not with y'all. I said, we're a bunch of losers here. With, these guys can play. <laughs> That's a true story. 1965. Oh, God, I was a, you know what a soda jerk is? In, in those days, every um, drugstore had a soda fountain where you made chocolate malts and stuff like that, you know. Boy, they said, fine looking black girls come walking in there. They said, you got to serve us. I said, sit yourself down, honey. I serve you. <laughs> What's up, baby? Boy, it's my boss going, oh, they black. I said, no, they're good looking, man. What you mean? What you mean? Forget the color. What's up, baby? How you doing? I wasn't saved in those days. <laughs> I told Mr. Poor, she was the only him that little so I said, they got green money. What's the matter with you? They just, people want something to drink. Good Lord. Never had that in my, yeah, my, my grandparents were prejudiced, but not my mama. Whoo, Lord. She said, you don't say none of, you say yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no man to anyone. To any other, you understand me? Boy, mama was like that, you know. Yeah, so we, we, we didn't, we wasn't raised with that, you know. None of that kind of stuff. So I just like people. I don't care. See, it's the policy of isolation that a lot of people use. Except, no, I'm not doing that. Why? Because they're people. See, that's why Jesus said, Zacchaeus, it's expedient. I'm going to just put some words. It's expedient. I go to your house. Not just to eat dinner. I have a quest here and a conquest. Oh, I like that. But he had to pass to the disapproval of the church. I've had to do that. 
you know, at one time I could barely preach in church, so I just went to the convention centers. Filled them up, too. You know, I came to Las Vegas and rented the convention center and filled it up. Because <laughs> nobody knew me in Las Vegas. Except. <laughs> and I got a good price on the convention center. You do what you got to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. More people were saved, blessed, touched. So when I preach in a Baptist church, I preach like a Baptist. Depends on if it's a black Baptist church or a white Baptist church. And they got them. You got it. You, white Baptist. For God so loved the world. <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shouldn't perish. But have everlasting life. Can I get a witness? <laughs> black Baptist church, totally different. It's Baptist. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so love the world. <laughs> I said, for God, ha, 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 <laughs> that it gave, 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 <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, I like this. Bishop T.D. Jakes, he said, Jesse, you the blackest white man I've ever seen in my life. He said, you can say things to black people that I can't, and I'm black. He said, I got criticized one time. He said, well, Jesse said it. <laughs> he said, but the reason why, because they know you love them. I love people. And I, I just like, I love, thank God somebody came. Yeah. Why? See, I don't have the policy of isolation. We were just in, um, was it Belfast, North Carolina? Ballamina? We had gypsies coming to me. I was excited. People say, watch them gypsies, man. Because they can get in your wallet without you even knowing it. <laughs> I said, good God, man. What's the matter with you? Let your light shine. I got invited by the Crow Nation, Montana, to preach. They came up there, man. And I thought, man, they, and they was, I said, can y'all sing some of the native songs? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So I start dancing with them. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, man, we had a meeting, man. It was a blessing. And I'll never forget the chief. The people were just looking. And one man said, I hated every white man I've ever met. But I, there's something about you. I said, yes, sir. I got Christ in it. He said, I didn't want to serve a white God. He said, but there's no such thing as it. I said, no, sir. Jesus just loves you. It has nothing to do with his skin color. It has to do with his heart. You see what I'm saying? But people use that policy. Of, I, said, I, I don't know why. I, you know, I just let my light shine. And you know, when they integrated us, we won games. I was excited. And one of my best friends was a fullback from South Donna High School who came down. His name was Jesse. Black guy. Talk about could run through. He knocked down brick. Jesse passed away about four years ago. Now, this is 1967. This guy could play. This guy was a football player. I got to tell y'all this. I hope y'all don't get too offended. You won't. You won't. This, this is where we talk in South Louisiana. We tell people to go to hell. It's not cussing. That's a location. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, David, if you watch. <laughs> but that's just how we are. That's our culture. <laughs> that's, just, that's just our culture. We're just thinking location. We ain't thinking cussing. Well, I am a Cajun man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a true born-again Cajun boy. Now, you know, with the, with the prejudice, with the white people don't make no difference. They call me a coon ass. Anybody ever heard that? Hold your hand up if you heard it so people know what I'm talking Yeah, coon ass. Well, Jesse, we became good friends. They called him Big Jesse. They called me Little Jesse. I mean, Jesse, but I tell you, well, you put a ball in his hand, he going he gonna through that line. So that guy, was, he could have he been in the NFL. I mean, I mean, he was just that good. Well, somebody, some guy popped off, called him a coon. Man, Jesse got mad. I'm like, whoa, Jesse, don't hit him, don't. So, you know, and we used to cuss in them days, the real cuss words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, no. He said, I can't believe he called me a coon. I said, Jesse, I said, they called me a coon ass. At least you're the front of the coon. <laughs> At least you're the front. I'm the back. I'm worse off than you are. 
He go, yeah, I never thought about that, Jeff. <laughs> and he busts out laughing. Bust out. I said, you want to get back? You want to get? You want to get back at the guy? Yeah. I said, get his girlfriend. That'll make him mad. Get his girlfriend. <laughs> That'll make him mad. And he did. <laughs> of course, we wasn't saved in those days. Why? Well, I guess we were too sin- too big of a sinner. They didn't want to have anything to do with us. Isn't that so? How can someone that loves the Lord hate someone? Opposites attract, just like outcasts attract. So if I see a big sin, I go, hmm, oh, fresh meat. When you understand what I'm saying here, the church was, I, we should, well, we come from Mardi Gras town. You ever heard of Mardi Gras? Well, New Orleans had two million people on, on the street, drunk as a skunk. You can't control that. They take their clothes off. You, the cop try to say, you can't, can't stop it. Two million people. And everybody, you know, and you know what? We decided that we're going to preach the gospel. Did we have some fun? So I had a friend of mine, his name was Mitchell. We dressed him up like Jesus. We poured ketchup all over his head. Put some thorns, kind of thorns, and he was dragging a cross. And there's millions, of, two million people on the streets. And we in, I said, get in front of the float, one of the floats. And they didn't know how our microphone system would work. We had a person with a baby stroller with the mic inside the stroller. They couldn't see it, thought it was a baby. And we preach it. You know, and that's, that's Mitchell. And I'm real close. And I look at him and say, you're going to hell. You got to preach radical evangelism. You killed him. You destroyed him. You crucified him. People go, ah, they want to kill us. And Mitchell, he said, they're going to kill us, Jesus. They're going to kill us. I said, just keep your head down, man. you Jesus. Keep your head down. <laughs> you Jesus. They ain't going to kill you yet. They're going to kill me first. But they, no. <laughs> we had people. You can see how God's power broke it. This demon, they go, ah, and bust out crying. Get on their knees. This is on the streets. And giving their life to Jesus. Guess who criticized us? The church. Y'all should have had a tent. Ain't nobody going in the tent. Not on Mardi Gras Day. You got to use radical evangelism. Captain said, I want to be like you, Jesse. I'm going to get out there. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm preaching, boy. I mean, spit flying. A guy told me, he said, if you'll come, I'll put two 18-wheeler truck beds. They'll hear you all over New Orleans. Pace Sound Company. You can hear me preaching four miles away. Sound like God. Hello. Whoa. 18 stacks of speakers. Oh, man. I mean, 24 channels, 24 monitors link channel to channel. Preaching, boy. And Kathy said, I want to do it. And we had people out there in the midst of the crowd, you know, could give, give them a book or talk to them if they bust out crying. I mean, they bust out crying and get saved. So Kathy said, I want to do this. She was so sweet. You know, she goes out there. All of a sudden, man, I can't find Kathy. I don't know where she's at. I thought, oh, God, where's my wife? I look, but finally, you just preach your throat out. And I threw the microphone to the other preacher, and I went to find Kathy. And Kathy was in this little trailer that we used so we could rest ourselves for a few minutes. I said, Kathy, I come here out there. She said, I started to tell them about Jesus. They were grabbing me. Let them all go to hell. I don't care if they all go to hell. I, said, <laughs> I couldn't help it. Honey. I just had to tell them. <laughs> but she, she got enough guts. <laughs> I said, just preach to them like this. You get close to me, I'll knock your brains out. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> People say, you're not embarrassed? I wasn't embarrassed to fall out drunk before I was born again. That happened to me this morning. I got off the, I got on the, uh, on, on the elevator to go down, and two drunk women got in the same elevator with me. A mom and a daughter, both them drunk as one head, head on my, and she breathed, uh, <laughs> just breathing booze. I said, "Whoa, girls, y'all all right? Man, I, I didn't think they're gonna make it to their room, but I sure wasn't walking to their room with them. I'm not gonna do that, you know. Oh, oh, you got pretty hair." I said, thank you. I, 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 I believe she sold 14 of me. I mean, people drunk as a skunk. It's 5 o'clock in the morning, man. I was going to go down to the club, uh, that uh, spa club or whatever you call it, do some workout, but I decided not to. Because I had to check out, get all my stuff out so my pilots could take that and then get here for 
uh, this ungodly hour <laughs> of morning services. My God. <laughs> Well, I, did, I, I think this is the first time I ever preached an 8 o'clock service, you know. <laughs> Shoo, woo, Jesus. <laughs> See, we must bring passion to indifference and fervor to coldness. We must bring passion to indifference. See, people are indifferent. I will not. I will not allow prejudice in my life. I won't allow it if I see it. I say, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? Who, who, you know, you're hurting somebody's feeling. Do you understand what's going on here? Yeah. See, you let your light shine. I went to check out this morning, and guess what? Lady said, I know who you are. You're Jesse the Planet. I've checked you out every time you've come to Vegas for the last three years. I said, and isn't that something? She said, there's a light in you, Brother Jesse. I said, yeah. I just know the Lord. I just, I just like, like, see, I don't care if they're drunk, messed up, crazy. Why? Because opposites attract, outcasts attract. I just let my light shine. I had one guy say this one time. It was not last year, but year before that. He got on, he said, uh, how much you win? <laughs> he got I said, oh, I want it all. Oh, oh. <laughs> he goes, oh. He said, man. I said, man, I, I, God gave it all. I got it all. He said, well, oh, I wish you could come to the room and tell my wife because I lost it all. <laughs> he was sweating, man. Yeah. You want a true story? This happened at the Kentucky Derby. I've always wanted to go to the Kentucky Derby because I love them horses. I don't know nothing about horses. I'm not a gambler. I never was a gambler even when I was a sinner. But I like them. Them horses are athletes, boy. Them thoroughbreds are amazing. I mean, I mean, how they run like that. So I got invited to the Kentucky Derby. I went. It was a blessing. I was talking to the lady whose her, her husband was the president of Churchill Downs. I didn't know. We were at the highest point in I mean, where the rich people are. I mean, they, they just opened it up. They didn't cost me nothing. I go on like that. So we sitting there. Boy, they see all these beautiful women in, uh, dressed with them hats. You know, that man, they got hats. You got to be dressed up for the Kentucky. And, they, and, they, and they're drinking mint juleps and whatever that is. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just sitting there. So it came time for the Kentucky Derby. It's called the Kentucky Derby Race. Da -da 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 you know how they do all that kind of stuff. And the Lord spoke to me. We're sitting at a dinner table. We're about ready to go outside and watch the horses run. He said, you want to know who's going to win? I said, yeah. I mean, I didn't know any of the horses, no nothing. He said, Medina Spirit. He said, you can tell them. Now, they're all gambling. You know, they're all going to place bets. So I, come, I said, hey, y'all want to know who's going to win? They looked at me and go, you know who's going to win? I said, yeah, God just told me who's going to win. They go, What, are you going to place a bet? I said, no, I don't bet. I just come seeing the horses run. I just like, they're just athletes. You know, I like that to see that. Amazing how they string it with every fiber of their being, you know. I said, Medina Spirit. Ah, oh, nah. Man, that horse, you know how many odds get? Nah, I ain't doing nothing. I said, okay. We went out there and here they go. Medina Spirit led all the way. Most horses don't lead all the way. That Medina Spirit was running. And my God, Medina Spirit crossed the finish line. They went, Medina Spirit. And they looked at me and they went, I said, they said, man, if, if you, you should have bet, you'd have made $100,000, maybe more. I said, yeah, but then what am I going to do with it? I got to find a place to put that thing. I ain't got time for that. They go, are you coming back next year? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. They just couldn't get over that I wouldn't bet. Well, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not going to be critical of people in it all the because I've learned something. Vegas changed all. They used to call it ga gambling. They don't call it that no more. They call it gaming. <laughs> Notice how, the Lord, how the devil can kind of swap those things out, you know? Oh, it's not gambling, it's gaming. Oh, okay, you know, whatever. I'm not here to criticize anybody. What I'm saying, but I said, no. Yeah, but you could have made so much money. The God told you that? I said, well, he know the horses. He created them. He knows one's got the heart and one that don't. I said, even in the Christian, he knows the ones that got the heart and the ones that don't. You see, you must bring passion to indifference and fervor to coldness. Beware of lost ideals, lost enthusiasm, lost hope, and lost spiritual joy. 
I'm talking to the most churches today when I said that. People just go to church, oh, God, should have stayed home. Beware of lost ideals, lost enthusiasm, lost hope, and lost spiritual joy. I've seen that so happen so much in the body of Christ today. Well, what do we do? We must restore. We must renew. We must recreate. We must reconcile. Restore, renew, recreate, and reconcile. So I just let my light shine. And I've had some sinner people say, you don't know how bad I've been. I said, you don't know how good Jesus is. You, uh, the, let me tell you something. The promises of God are far more powerful than the sins of people. Think about that. Think, think of that statement. The promises of God are far more powerful than the sins of people. So maybe you got a son that's crazy on you or a daughter. It's just their tough luck. They were born to you. You got the promises of God down to a thousand generations. <laughs> that's how my mother believed it. And my mother saw me preach the gospel before she went home to be with the Lord. I was a chief of sinners. She introduced me as her little heathen boy. I remember that at, a, at eight years old, seven, eight years old. I was always in some little scam about something going on. Well, we were poor. I said, man, I got, daddy ain't got no money. We, got, we had to do something. I sold my brother's clothes. I did anything I could to try to make a buck. I sold protection in the third grade. <laughs> my mom, I heard my mama tell my brother Wayne. Wayne could fight. He's in heaven today, too. She said, now, don't let nobody hurt uh, Jesse. And I thought, hmm, I can make money on this. <laughs> so I went over, we all, you know, he was two years ahead of me in school. We all went to the same school, but, you know, two years ahead. He says, uh, I said, so I walked up to the guy, I said, somebody mess with you, I'll take care of it. Then. If they hit you, I'll take care of it. It's going to cost you 50 cents a week. <laughs> we got a deal here. I was making $4 a week. That's a lot of money. When ice cream was a nickel a scoop, a cup of coffee was a nickel. I'm telling you, when it went up to 10 cents, people said, we got to quit drinking coffee. <laughs> 10 cents. Can you give me 10 cents? But that's way back when. That's just how it was, you know. So what would happen is somebody hit one of my guys that I'm taking money from, and they said, I said, I'll take care of it. I run over to Wayne. I said, Wayne, you know what mama said? This guy, I lied like a dog. This guy hit me. Wayne said, where you at? Whap, whap. I use him for muscle, you see? Wayne, beep, beep. I took the money put it in my pocket. Wayne didn't know it until I was in the 12th grade. <laughs> oh, he was in the 12th <laughs> I didn't give him no money. I said, man, you, you don't know how to handle money, Wayne. <laughs> you know, it was just the way it was. You do what you got to do. <laughs> Can you believe a kid that think like that? But God saw something. And so my mama was praying one time, Lord, I'd like to have a preacher in my family. And the Lord said, Jesse. She said, oh, no, not Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse cut deals with the principal. <laughs> no. But she saw me preach the gospel. See, every time I tried to make her lose something, she would restore it, recreate it. Good Lord, reconcile. Say, God's word is true. And I said, Mommy, you done lost your ever loving mind. Instead of arguing with me, she said, That's right. I've got the mind of Christ. It's just your tough luck. You were born to be boy. You're going to get saved whether you like it or not. Okay. Yeah. We're all commanded to bring people into a new world and make them realize they belong to it. I don't care whether, you know, I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, no, you belong to this. See, people don't know what to do anymore. You think about it. We are in the days of Noah, ladies and gentlemen. How do you know that? Not because of tsunamis and earthquakes and, you know, all the different things that you see happening. That's the beginning of sorrow. That happened, started happening in the 30s and the 40s. You know, tsunamis, earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, dust storms, call it what you want, whatever it was. No, it's when man has corrupted himself. I told the people in the first service, I can't believe that people don't know what sex they are. I asked someone while I was in Vegas yesterday, where's the... Where's the restroom? Which one? I said, what? Which one do you want? I said, well, do I have a choice? 
that I, I was in Nostrums, and I went to the, this lady told me where to go, and uh, but they would shut down, so I went to another. <laughs> went up there, walked there. She said, "Which one?" She said, "You can have men, you have women, and you have." What's the word she used? I, I, I kind of interpret it as transgender. So, yeah. I said, the, the men one. Okay, I thought, good God. If you, if you want to know what sex you are, look down. <laughs> Am I shocking you? No. Just look down. You'll find, you'll find out what you are. I, I don't feel that way. It make no difference you feel. The world don't know what to do. Black man asked me the other day, what do you think about Black Lives Matter? I said, what are you asking me, about the organization or about black people? Because there's a vast difference between the two. I said, did you see that black man crying? They're burning his business down. They kept screaming at him. I'm a black man. What are you burning my business down for? I ain't crazy about that Black Lives Matter. I'm crazy about black people. I like people. Oh my God, man, the man worked all his life to build his business. You're going to burn it down? Smash and grab. <laughs> I heard that at the forum. I said, why do we got to stand in line to go in this store? Oh, we've had some smash and grab. Oh, not, not New Orleans. Oh, no, oh, no. You smash, boom, boom. They grab you and throw you out. <laughs> Take you to the river, son. <laughs> uh-uh, you don't do that. You don't do that. Oh, 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 no. Where's Fred? I don't know. <laughs> uh, when you understand what God is saying here, he may send you to a place that you never thought you would go. So that person could become a son of Abraham, daughter of Abraham. Remember this. Look for the original goodness because it's there. Yeah. And you know what? I think the reason why God and me and Kathy got together was because of this ministry. And yet her mother hated me, but I hated her. Two of us agreed. <laughs> that didn't make any difference. I told her I'd kill you in a second. Well, I would too. She'd do it. She could have, she tried to kill me too. She didn't care. <laughs> but today, well, I wasn't born again. She wasn't born again. She saved now. She 90 years old, hadn't lost nothing in her mind, sharp as a tack. Yeah. You know what she told me about, well, about a month ago? You know, Kathy's got four sisters and one brother. One brother just went to heaven. Only had one brother. Wonderful. One of the best men you ever meet was her brother. And she got four sisters, including Kathy. <laughs> we said, oh, plus Kathy, yeah. There's a bunch of them, you know. She, she said that she was mad about something. She said, I'm tired of my daughters trying to sell their husbands to me. <laughs> now, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, you know, well, I, I, know, I know your husband. I, I, I know, man. She said, now, Jesse. I thought, here it comes, man. She said, that's one thing Jesse's never done. He's never tried to change Kathy. Why would I want to change Kathy? That's why I married her. And she liked that. I guess in her mind that the other son-in-law, the daughters trying to sell their husband to change them. I don't think so, but I mean, you know, but that's, that's what she thinks. That's fine. She said, but Jess has never tried to change God. I said, well, I never will. But yet, I'm the one that took this 17-year-old girl, went to a different state, going out playing music, which was the craziest one of all the son-in-laws. But I think, I'm not, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm her favorite son-in-law now. Because we, I got born again, she got born again. She still loves us. She calls us outlaws. There's the in-laws, we're the outlaws. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if she, if she said, you never have tried to, I said, no. I mean, even when I was a sinner, I said, yeah, no. Why? Because, you know, when Kathy got saved, I knew something happened. But I thought, why? You don't do nothing wrong. She said, I got saved. I said, but you don't do nothing wrong. Do something wrong. <laughs> Steal something. Do something wrong. <laughs> But she wouldn't. She just, Kathy was just a good, I will not do that. I'll do it for you. Just do something wrong. 
I mean, how'd you like to be sleeping and you could feel little fingers coming across the sheets and somebody touch your shoulder and your wife, come out, you demon devil. I said, get your hand off of me, woman. I like this demon. I like this devil. Oh, I'm sorry. Then after a while, she quit saying she's sorry. She said, uh, you. One time she said, devil, get out of my house. Jesse, stay where you are. <laughs> and that's kind of confusing. I wanted to go with the devil, you know. <laughs> but Kathy, bind me. She bound me in Jesus. I bind you. <laughs> I don't know what she saw. Opposite of track. Outcast of track. But I really believe God saw this ministry. He knew what would happen. He knew it. And uh, Kathy's always, I got to say that she's always had my back, you know, with a knife in her hand, but she did all the truth. I thought that was funny, Kathy. Just said, no, it's not true. <laughs> well, maybe close, maybe close. <laughs> you know? I mean, she had to put up with some of the craziest stuff you've ever seen because of me. <laughs> she, she must have a, uh, yeah, I understand. I know what you're talking about. But you know what? She stuck it out. And I came to the knowledge of Jesus. No policy of isolation. <laughs> I called a good friend of mine the other day. His wife answered. She said, your little gangster friend is on the phone. <laughs> I used to be. Not, not, none of that anymore. You know, he just made up my mind that I would serve Jesus all my life. Just let Christ come in me. And he did. Did you enjoy it this morning? Yes. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. A quest and a conquest. Now, the devil has tried to attack you people, attack you pastors, but he messed up. He shouldn't have touched David and Vicky. He doing his, now, why, why did that happen? Because y'all are a threat to him. You call word of life. This is not called word of doubt, word of fear. This is called word of life. Do you see what I'm saying? That's God's word. That's why the devil tries to attack so much. But you get to a point, he's not a fate devil, he's a flesh devil. Just pay no attention to him. See, you just don't pay no attention to him. Just go on and live, live your life with Jesus. Keep doing what God tells you to do. The COVID was designed by Satan to, ch to shut the church down, but it turned around and built the church. Uh, the devil didn't realize how much people do love God. Now, people get a little scared. I ain't scared of nothing. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. I will not. I ain't afraid of nothing. Why? I'm not bragging about that. Just, why? Because there's Christ in me. And my God. He take care of me, see. Oh, but suppose it don't work, but suppose it does. What you going to do if it don't? What you going to do if it does? See, you get to that point, buddy, where the word of God is your shield and buckler. And it'll work. Give Jesus a 